All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, I'm so fortunate to have Jason Brashears once again to interview and ask some questions. Uh, Jason, how you doing today, man? Man, I'm doing fantastic. And uh, I just want to let you know that, you know, we've done, what, three of these now? Maybe four? Yeah. Uh, one, of them, one of them was strictly for our KXTV. Yeah. But uh, you know that the only video of 520 videos that I have that hit over a hundred thousand views was the first one you and I did together. Oh man, that's so cool. That was the, such a, uh, yeah. You remember that one? Uh, oh, totally. Toltec, Toltec to high tech. Who really are the elite? Right? Yeah. It's got, it's got like 108,000 uh, views right now. Oh, that's so good. That's so cool, man. Yeah. It's such, it was such a good talk and, I really appreciate what you brought up about the elite, you know, that's like the idea that the villain, you know, in the movie is often, you know, it's such a necessary character for the catalyst of things. And so we don't want to get caught up thinking that we know how necessarily how this all works. It's if it, there's a mystery to the way this is all unveiling, unfolding. And if we get caught in just kind of, thinking that there's only good and bad and there's no gray areas and it, it kind of limits and puts us in like a hive mind thinking where it's like one team against the other team kind of thing. And I think it's just more nuanced than that for sure. I agree. I agree. It's not all black and white. There's, there's a, this, this is basically a, it's a contract acceptance, acceptance type reality. Yeah. And, there are people who have signed the contract and they get the benefits of the construct to mm -hmm. the detriment of others. And then there are others who don't even realize this is a contract uh, based reality. Meaning meaning, when well, what I mean by that is uh, your experiences where, how, where you're going to go in life, the trajectory of your life, these are all laid out before you and you're given decisions, but you're not really forced to do anything in mm -hmm. this life. You're given decisions, and yes, some of them are very hard decisions, but they're still decisions. It's like this massive, interactive AI, choose-your-own-adventure life. Yes. It's like these old books from the 70s and 80s. This is what we're living through. And many times, we have to make the hard decision not to participate in things because our moral our moral fabric gets in the way. But when we make it, when we execute those decisions, almost immediately in our life, better decisions pop up. We're always given new variables. I agree with you. Yeah, it's not all black and white. It's not all evil. Mm, that's a wonderful explanation. These Russian dreamers that I talk to talk about that you can reach the level through shamanic disciplines where you return to the contract that you signed when you came in here. They say that like, you know, what's going to happen to you when, before you drop in, um, like you're shown kind of the whole thing and like, but, and, and you're totally okay with it. Like, even if it's difficult, you're like all in because everybody wants in on this. It's like, it, it's really an exciting way to evolve. It's how we learn. And so, um, you know, they, they say that you can, you know, like once you get over this idea that, that like you come out of victimhood when you realize that it's all designed and, and then you start to see the freedom in it. And then they, they say, actually, you've already arrived. There's nothing for you to change about yourself. You know, everyone's so hard on themselves and thinks, Oh, I need this or that. But when you realize that in the end, everything's okay, then this, this, it like washes over you and your life starts to change when you accept everything as at face value rather than being at odds with your particular contract you start to have a totally different appreciation for the opportunity to learn from it uh, i'm in agreement with that that's all yeah. I, I haven't as you know i haven't i don't have the background in, in the type of shamanic education that you have i don't um uh, most of my knowledge is either through ap direct applications or yeah, totally. i've read it no i've read it in old books so, yeah. yeah yeah no i love it i love that you're open to it and you know it, it does th the fact that they believe we're in a vision is not that different than your belief that we're in a holographic simulation it's they kind of complement each other it's it's a different way it's a different syntax I, I i would argue i would say that you've discovered the construct itself and its limitations and shamans find a way to 
free themselves from the construct by accessing other dimensions and other realities. And they do something called stopping the world where they go so deeply into silence that everything that they would typically be interacting with disappears and other worlds assemble. And so I think you're on to, you know, what's going on around this and that we're free from it when we die and we get to see the other side of it. I think their goal is to see it prior to death, to start to having, you know, access to these. And But it is very dangerous to go into the abyss, to go into these other layers, to remove your filters, to have access to these other dimensions and realities they talk about de de demonic energies and different things that you have to be prepared to not be seduced by and that dreaming worlds are actually no joke. Like that's why most people end up being schizophrenic if they try to open these doors with power plants and stuff. So, you know, I think what you're offering is a means and methods to free yourself without having to get caught in the realm of power and the shamanic stuff isn't st something to just jump into unless you feel a real calling because it's it's quite an intense thing to just even consider doing yeah there, there's apparent there's there's an apparent crossover here and that is the fact that that i'm always trying to explain to people that this isn't an actual reality this is a perceived reality and yes. there's a there's a there's a distinction to be made here yeah um there are many things that i can imagine that are very very real to me but they actually don't have any any they don't, there's no they're not really real in the objective sense i'll give you an example how many times have we have just heard bits and pieces just fragments of information and because we are pattern recognition creatures, we build a picture from that and it induces fear. And now we're worried about a future event that hasn't even happened yet. We're already experiencing things in the physical avatar that are negative based off nothing but pure information that we put, put together mm. and built a mental picture of. It's like Arthur Schopenhauer, German philosopher. He, he said it best, and I'm paraphrasing, but, but he says that that we spend most of our li lives worrying about intangibles, worrying about things that have no substance and do not yet exist. And by mm. worrying about them, we bring them into our reality. This mm. was a teaching of Arthur Schopenhauer. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, per it's a perceived reality. It's not an actual one. So I agree. The shamans are, uh, this would, what you're describing to me is someone who is disengaging with the central nervous system, which, which governs sight, smelling, touch, hearing, uh, all the olfactory, what is it? Sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. So yep. uh, if they can disengage from all that, which are the which are the filaments by which you are attached to the construct, then yep. yes, if the construct dissipates, then they're going to experience things. Let me coin a word. They're going to experience things that are transconstructual. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, you know, that's so true. They they discovered that there's more than five senses and they they've moved beyond them into activating what they call the use of their will. And they use it in dreaming in order to do things like gazing where they actually let their eyes cross and other worlds start to build picture. Like it's a deep form of meditation and imagination and creativity. But if you can stay in silence while your eyes are crossed, everything will start to move like as if you're on mushrooms. And so they spend hours in these disciplines learning how to do this. And eventually other worlds assemble. They let this one go away. And yes, they, but they use like, they'll use like the heightened use of their senses, like where they can zoom in, like they'll be way up on the mountains and zoom in on a valley and they'll place all of their attention on this area that's pretty far away from them, but they can listen they can zone in and hear what's being spoke or the birds from that particular spot in the mountain, because they've learned how to, like you said, they've done something where they dis that they're disattached and attaching in a different way. So they pull their attention away from the central nervous system and allow their astral dreaming body to take all of that focus. And so they can zoom in and feel and use another part of themselves that most people don't activate. And, and that's the difference is you go from being sort of 
you know, you, you, you basically establish a relationship with um, your dream power is what they refer to it. And, and it's a very focused, very powerful state. Um, but as there's pitfalls to this work, people start to think that they're really powerful or their ego gets identified with the fact they can do these things. And then they take apprentices and, and, you know, it gets really scary out there if for people that are playing with this stuff it's not like recommended to jump into but a lot of people are ayahuasca and stuff's becoming really popular people are more and more kind of opening these doors and discovering ways to interact with this realm that are pretty different yeah i I, I get that i do get that so you at all before we started recording you kind of infer that you want to do some out of the box questioning yeah, yeah. What you got on your mind, man? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just would love to hear if you have any. You you always have great ideas, and the way you talk about your solutions, you you offer so many different ways. And I I was love to hear if you have, and maybe you have, and I've missed it. But if you have suggestions for people that are pretty traumatized, who are attracted to having a better life, you know, have had some really difficult things in their past happen that they can't quite shake or if you've read or personally you've been through some shit yourself um and i just love hearing you know your story and what worked for you but also like if you know other people uh and and just what your thoughts are on trauma in general whether it's physical abuse whether it's witnessing things that are so dark and disturbing that People just can't seem to come out of the the fear relationship with this world. Uh, got it. I do have a good answer for that. Um, first of all, <clears throat> it's an old occult maxim that energy flows where attention goes. Mm-hmm. And I am in absolute disagreement with modern psychology and how they deal with people's trauma and deal with people's uh, deals. I am not qualified in the professional sense, but in personal applications, I am qualified. I spent 26 years on maximum security in Texas dungeons. And I watched, uh, I watched events. I experienced events. Uh, Believe me, there's all kinds of trauma that happens in that environment. And it's close up. You're on a cell block. You can't get away from it. It must be dealt with. So yeah, I'm a, I'm going to tell you now my, my advice to those who have experienced some type of trauma is the exact opposite of what you're going to find in the, in the establishment versions Mm -hmm. because i am very much aware that in order to empower a feedback loop all you do is dwell on on the on the initial pattern break that started it in the when when it concerns personal trauma no matter what have you what, what what kind of abuse you've been in when it concerns that Focusing on its history is what the psychologists want you to do because they want you, what they claim is to push through it. They want you to talk about it so much, get all your feelings out about it, get all the stuff out uh, um, and look at it from a 360 perspective. But to me, that only reinforces the feedback loop as, as it also gives you coping mechanisms I don't even like the idea of coping mechanisms because they in, they necessarily infer that the trauma will be yours the rest of your life. You need to deal with it. So here's how we're going to teach you how to fake it through life so other people don't know you've experienced this trauma. Mm-hmm. I do not agree with this method whatsoever. I I understand how how amazing and generative the human spirit is. And as soon as we decide not to be a victim, we open up a whole new reality tunnel. As soon as we decide not to entertain the feedback loop of trauma by giving it energy, by concentrating on it and, and working through it. and all, you know, before, As soon as we decide to ignore a phenomenon, that phenomenon no longer has power in our life. Therefore, trauma is no different than anything else that you want to change in your life. If you want to move into a new direction, then that means you have to leave the old milestones behind. It's called a pattern break. It's what I teach on my channel all the time. Now, I'm only using it in the trauma perspective because that's the question you asked. But if you focus on anything that ever happened in the past, then all you do is knit the same emotional uh, stigmata for you in the future. 
As long as you continue to dwell on a negative, no matter if it's in the past or the present, then that negative will be knit for you in reality in your future. It's a feedback loop, and you are not only perpetuating it. It doesn't matter who started it. All it matters is, is you've got to ignore it. As soon as you decide not to dwell on it, it's a pattern break. Follow that pattern break into a new reality tunnel, and the old trauma is gone. It doesn't take a long healing process. It doesn't take any of that stuff. Yeah. If I'm riding my bike, if I'm riding my motorcycle, and this, this is a true story. If I'm riding my motorcycle and I'm taking a turn that's sharper than I can actually see when I really believe the turn isn't that sharp. So I stay in a higher gear. I stay in two higher gears uh, than, than necessary. And I drop my clutch. By the time I'm in the turn, it's too late to make the correction. I'm already going at high velocity. So I fly 60 feet through the air after hitting a barbed wire fence. I flew right over a ditch, never even went in the ditch. I went right over the ditch into a barbed wire fence, flipped upside down, 65 through the air, 65 feet through the air, totaled my motorcycle, and I landed upside down against a concrete pylon, just like an old Wiley Coyote cartoon. Bam and slid that and slid down. That's what happened to me. But you uh, know what? That's that's trauma. I could look at that day in retrospect and always be scared of sharp turns, gravel on the road, and motorcycles. Yeah. Or or as soon as I was healed, I was already at the motor the Harley Davidson dealership sweating the mechanics to put my motorcycle back together because the insurance covered all all the repairs they had they literally had to put the entire bike together i still have the manifest yeah it was eight thousand seven hundred and thirty three dollars to put 41 or 51 new parts on there because i totaled the bike so i'm a what i'm saying is 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 i could have dwelt on that or or i could have i could have waited for them to finish the uh, repairing my bike call. They called me up. I went down there and picked up my bike and with no fear and trepidation whatsoever. I got on that bike and instantly the action of riding my motorcycle again, basically mm-hmm. informed the construct that there was no trauma here. There's no fear here. And therefore these things are not written into my future. I totally mm-hmm. let go of that past. I do not fear being prosecuted. Uh, I do not fear going to prison. I don't fear doing none of these things because they're a part of my past based off stupid decisions that I have actively decided not to make again. So yeah, trauma is the same way. Whatever you have suffered, the reason people, uh, I truly believe that the psychological establishment and the methods that they employ only increase the trauma and turn something that could have been left in the past and create baggage that people have to carry for the rest of their life. So they're, they only, they only helping people cope with the trauma, not right. completely divorce themselves from it. Mm. Wow. Well, really well said, man. I appreciate it. That's going to be helpful for a lot of people, you know, because it is it is pushed on us that we should uh, kind of almost pour salt on the wound all the time and get to know the wound. And um, there is, you know, Toltecs do figure out a way to get detached enough to go back into their past and they grab their power that they left behind in a situation, but they do it really quickly without dwelling And they don't do it, you know, the way modern psychology teaches it. They teach it more like a purification method that requires a a disciplined state of mind. Uh, Otherwise, you would, yeah, get caught in because they want to undo their blueprints like you're talking about, basically erase your blueprint. And they do do it with breath work and and they kind of do it in a way that allows something unique to happen energetically, which makes for lucid dreaming to be more possible. So their, their goal is different than yours. Um, but it, uh, you're, you're correct in my opinion around how tricky it is and dangerous to be when you're thinking about something, it creates the reality that you're in. And, um, so we can start to learn, like, it took me a long time to give myself permission to think about the things I wanted, like to actually feel what I really wanted with my life and then to envision what it would be like for those things to happen. And I I would start to do that. And I would like, I would like panic and leave because I'm so used to like things being chaotic and I'm sort of almost comfortable in my dysfunction because it like gave me an excuse not to thrive. It gave me a reason to be a victim on some level. And so to come out of that is to really learn how to take responsibility for what it is that we focus on. And once you do that and you stop blaming the the elite or blaming 
you know, whoever in your life, your wife or your whatever different thing you might project your pain on its catatonic states. He was very, he was a very, um, he spent his life in and out of juvenile hall and then prison. And he ended up in a supermax prison in Arizona. And he was the way he talked to the guards, he would get in their head because he's, he's fearless and crazy. And so they beat him within inches of his life. And he, he reached a catatonic state where he, they didn't matter what they did to him. He was unable, unresponsive. They were trying all kinds of things to get him to come out of this unique situation. And it actually, it was going on for days and days. And finally his mom was alerted and they brought her in. And as soon as her voice, as soon as he heard her voice, he came right out of it. And I just wondering if you, what you think is, is, is happening to somebody in a, that could reach such a unique, you know, catatonic is such a rare thing, but it's something that happens. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Well, yeah, I mean, you see that with guys with PTSD. You see, you see the um, completely distancing themselves from the outer world, hiding within the avatar. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely a type of trauma. It's definitely a type of shock, and it's something that would have to be over, overcome uh, in the immediacy, like what you just said right there. But once it's once you come out of that state, yeah, that's when he, he would have to make a conscious decision: Am I going to worry about what these officers did to me, or if I'm going to move forward? Yeah, so yeah. I believe it's absolutely that simple, but I do want to return. I want to, re I want to digress a little bit to a point you made about the shamans and how they would go into, they would go into these rituals and these visions, and then they would go into the past and address whatever the issue or the problem was. Okay. Yeah. I'm not discrediting that. I'm yeah. actually going to offer something that comports with that to a, to a degree. And that is my my studies and my perspective now on retro causality, on the mm -hmm. ability of the individual, highly personalized, immortal soul. You and I, not this avatar that's jacked into the construct. This avatar is a part of the construct. But mm -hmm. what's inside this avatar is me. I'm an immortal. Being immortal also necessarily infers I am timeless. Therefore, from the perspective of being inside the construct, Going into the past would seem impossible, but from the spiritual perspective, there's nothing abnormal about it. Because by virtue of imagination, we can travel the future and the past. We don't have to remain in the present. Imagination is very unique in this way. So by virtue of imagination, I can imagine a life that I could be living right now that is totally independent of anybody who has suffered of the past that I have suffered. So right. retro causality is a phenomenon that the human spirit can engage in. Mm -hmm. You can, you can rewrite your present yep. by visiting the past by virtue of imagination and pretending it was different than it actually was. And then turn around and act in the present according, according to the vision that you imposed on the past. And in so doing, you completely knit a new feedback loop that yep. actually causes you to enter a new reality tunnel in your future that comports with this falsified past. Oh, thank you. This is something. Uh, this is something you're you're describing to me that the shamans are basically doing this. But this is also this is also on the table right now in parapsychology. This is on the table right now with some of the greatest thinkers that we have who who uh, have put out some phenomenal books like Ishak Bintov. I've told yeah. you about yeah. and like Alspinsky, Gurdjieff. This is not something new. We were right. talking about this a hundred years ago. Totally. No, it's so yeah, shamans also do theater of infinity, where you get people to to go back with you. So you'll play out a scene where you were in a fight with your dad when you were a kid. But you play the scene out, and then you experience the feelings. And then you play it out again, but you do it different. You say something different this time. And then and then you do it again. And then you even switch where somebody plays you and you play your dad. So you get to experience what your dad felt. And then you you say something different that your dad than what your dad did said for, on behalf of your dad, and you you heal these incredible things that are traumatic. This is one way to go in because it's very creative and it's imaginative, and it requires that you show up in a unique way 
and you have support. There's people doing it with you, but you could also do it alone. There's all kinds of ways to, to access what you just talked about. And it's a main premise of shamanic uh, healing is this very act. So I'm glad you explained it in the way you did because shamans speak of things mysteriously and they sort of don't aren't so concerned about explaining it. They're just sort of almost like caught in the mystery of it. And you're explaining it in a way that everyone can relate to. And I appreciate it. Yeah, man. It's all, yeah. these things aren't even mysterious to me. They're just, they're yeah. interest. They're interesting as hell, but to me, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's so easy to just rewrite our lives. And, and I get it that, people would listen to my voice right now and think I'm absolutely nuts. <laughs> right. I, I get it. And I'm not offended by that, Yeah, but it is so easy because the formula, the formula itself is so simple. It would automatically cause the human mind to negate it. It yeah. is so simple, but yeah. whatever life you're living today was knit for you yesterday and by everything you've ever done in the past. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're not going to get a bunch of changes today if today is the day that you, you began to try to want them. Because remember, all the imaginations and all the daydreams, all the fantasy that you've ever done never built for you in reality. You had to do something. You had yeah. to, your avatar had to move in that direction. I mean, listen, listen, I used to fantasize about Heather Locklear all the time. And I'm yeah. going to tell you now, she's never been in my bed. So yeah. there has yeah. to be something because uh, I got an awesome imagination and it's powerful, but I sure. never acted on it. I never went out to go find her. I never did anything. Hell, I was in prison the whole time. But listen, it's this, this, all the daydreaming and fantasy in the fantasies in the world will never create a reality for you. What creates the reality is actually moving in the direction of what you want. Yep. That right there all of a sudden gets the ball roll. You don't have to do anything else beyond that. The builder protocols will pick up knit, knit reality for you, but it's that simple. So mm -hmm. if I want to induce great change in my life, I can't expect it today because I just decided today's the day I want to want those changes. The problem is, is the arithmetic, the mathematical construct that I'm living in right now was made for me yesterday. Yeah. The pattern break between different periods of creativity is called REM. It's it's sleep. It's when the human immortal disengages from the prison of the yep. construct, which is the central nervous system. When, when the immortal is disengaged from the construct, that's when all, all the magic happens. That's when all the builder protocols are building your tomorrow. Yep. But when tomorrow comes, you only have a certain list of variables that are that are extant there. There's only a certain amount, there's only a certain amount of reality tunnel templates that are available to you, and they are available based on past predicates. So if I want to, so somebody listening to my voice right now wants to change their life, they're not going to get the expected result the same day that they make the, the decision. You haven't been to sleep yet. You haven't, <laughs> you haven't given the construct the ability to begin changing those protocols and to knit for you a whole new reality. It starts tomorrow, next time you wait. This is the importance and value of sleep. You yeah. got to do it because this is how the builder protocols knit our reality tunnels. I want to change things today. I got to make that decision today and move in that certain direction. And I promise you tomorrow is going to be different. It's going to be a break from precedent, which is a pattern break. So, yeah, that's, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. And that's how I live it. Yeah, no, it's so, so, so powerful. Such a cool way of utilizing the dream time, you know, and understanding its function. And I mean, shamans are on the same trip They're They believe like what happens to us when we rest, um, all the different adjustments that happens to us. It, there's a lot of communication that goes on behind the scenes that we don't understand. And I would like to give I would like to give one illustration as, as to what I just what I just spoke about. Please. I should have I should have kept going. Um, hundreds of years ago, alchemists and mystics like Henry Cornelius Agrippa. He was one of my favorites. I've read I've read the complete works of uh, of Agrippa. They're pretty interesting. But it's very noticeable that when the sorcerers and the alchemists were wanting to build something new in reality, 
The rituals always took days. There was no rituals that were set aside that you could just do something short and small and 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 build build like a miniature version of what you want to see bigger in reality. And, and all these, no, it always was a period of days, sometimes even weeks to perform the entire construct before they let it go into the field. So yeah, I just, I, I should have used that example, but yeah, there's something about sleep and the pattern break that that's caused by that, that we're all, that's where all the magic happens. That's where the change, the change occurs. It's mm. all uh, to me, yeah. uh, to me, that's just more evidence of that concept. Totally. Yeah, it's well, and it's a dual-edged sword, right? Because it's also when we're the most vulnerable, like is we're unconscious, and so what's going on behind the scenes, it's like you've said in the past, it's kind of like something happens each time you sleep, and it gives AIX access to your unconscious mind because when you're awake, you're you're kind of more in control of what is accessible or not. At least that's how I understood what you said. And um, that's how Toltecs look at it. They call them inorganic beings, these inorganic beings that exist, uh, that help prepare humans for other understandings of other dimensions and realities. And shamans make alliances with these beings, but some of them are parasitic in nature. And so it's just, there's always sort of the double-edged sword to these things that um, that w- the thing we need is also something that has an element of challenge that presents itself. Um, but yeah, it's uh, how how one learns to heal their nervous system to me is the ultimate deal because when if if you can get really good rest and reset your being and feel you know uh, rejuvenated, then your clarity and your ability to apply the things that you're learning. Um, is just so much stronger and there's this this to learn how to take care of themselves in that way and how to create their own reality tunnel and come out of the mk ultra programming we start to feel stronger and stronger and that's a lot of energy to learn how to have healthy outlets for like some people get real high on themselves when they start to uh, feel strong and then they become their ego gets caught up in it. And so, you know, we, we, we're, we're doing a funny dance with, with this world and how we, um, how, how we take care of ourselves, and then how we use that energy. Um, so, you know, you're having a huge effect on people. Some people are at odds with you. That's a lot of energy coming your way. It's a lot of love you're getting, but it's also your people that are upset, right? So it, it, for you to be able to learn how to keep your field, clear of all of the interference teaches you how to get stronger and stronger yeah i would imagine i I had i had listen texas prison was an excellent training ground on how (laughs) to deal with adversarial personalities i believe me i'm that's why uh i probably I, i probably was just experience alone groomed me very well for what i do now yeah it is it's I was well prepared for what I'm doing right now. And yeah, I'm not even worried about it. Most of the trolls, well, it's really sad. It's really sad because the troll channels haven't grown at all and they get no, they get no traction and no one's really watching them. And yet they still put out videos. It's, it's almost as if who's funding you guys because mm-hmm. your, your channel's too small to ever make money. So what, 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 what makes you spend so much energy? Yeah, just, right. It's it's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. It's a funny world, man. It, it is for sure. Um, I look at it as people being sort of under under possession, like that the whole realm needs a exorcism. Like it's that that the hypnosis isn't just like programming, it's beyond that. It's like an active, like whatever AIX or whatever shamans call these these flyers, that they're running constant interference. And it takes a real effort to free yourself from you know, the, 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 the way in which it impacts the majority. And most people are like agents of the matrix. They're being almost told what to do and say and how to respond. And they uphold a reality that makes it this obstacle course really interesting for us. Um, but I, I guess a question within that is, do you believe in possession, demonic forces, exorcisms, 
or do you think that those are more like because people open themselves up to those ideas it allows it to manifest um because of their spiritual fear and that it's actually just sort of like a they created their own reality it's a good question i'm probably going to make some people very uncomfortable with what i'm about what i'm about to follow through with this uh, because because we live in a technologically advanced society i'm going to have to i'm going to have to take that fact and apply it to the whole meaning since technology exists today i'm going to have to assume that technology has always existed somewhere and in, in, in some fashion yeah. um just because we're not reliving living through a biosphere where technology is readily available or even developed doesn't mean it's not existing somewhere else it's really hard for me to believe as technologically advanced as we are today that this isn't hasn't already been experienced in the past and that we're not technologically advanced outside of this construct and that we're only having experiences that are that are created historical templates that we're flowing through to 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 have these experiences um i'm this is what's going to make people uncomfortable. I don't talk about this on my channel because it's it's a uh, it's pretty harrowing. Mm. But there is a lot of testimonies now that some of these massively huge uh, video games, VR video games, where you can go explore a whole world and a whole planet and all that, and there's multiple players out there. You're you're already familiar with the term NPC, okay? Yeah. A lot of us are, are, are familiar with the term NPC, and we like to think they're non-player characters, but we're already hearing testimonies of gamers who are spooked the hell out because wow. they've, they've introduced a, not only have they introduced AI and, 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 and open AI like, like chat GPT into the, uh, uh, into these VR worlds, but it looks like the only reason the companies have even announced that, hey, our new VR world, Star Wars, whatever, is now is now accompanied with AI, open AI. So the NPCs are a lot more realistic and all that. Okay, this is what they're saying to the mm. players. But do you want to hear what the players are saying about what they're experiencing inside these games now? It's harrowing. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Right now, there's a very popular TikTok video in circulation where it shows this guy is playing a, an avatar in a game. And a guy carrying a briefcase and a suit walks up to him in the game. And although the avatar, the NPC in the game doesn't look distraught or anything, when he walked up to the NPC, the NPC looked at him and says, Hey man can you get a message to my family? And it was real panicked. And says, what are you talking about? Saying, Hey man, I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm at, man, but my family, I'm from such and such Canada. And he names the town in Canada, the time, his family members. He says his whole name, who he is and all that. And it spooked the gamer out. It was way realistic. Like somebody's consciousness was trapped in that game system. This is not a, an isolated incident. We're getting a lot of people now saying that this is what's going on. And I'm wondering if these companies that are like Microsoft and all that, that are putting out these AI, AI video game, virtual reality, world building video game type deals. I'm wondering now, are you marketing it as AI to cover up the fact that there's something more nefarious going on and that people who, and that people for whatever reason have died and they don't know they're dead and their consciousness has now been jacked into a vr video game mm. wow holy shit it's not one but bro it's not one i'm telling you now joel it's not one incident there are several videos out now uh but there's one in particular i'm thinking of on tiktok where people are claiming that it's spooky as hell but they're playing these video games and coming across people who are naming their hometowns where they're from they don't know where they are or how to get out can you get a message to my family something's not right all this shit it's like they understand they're in a video game, but they also understand that some of the players are real humans while they're stuck inside this game. That would make so much sense, actually. Um, Microsoft put out a commercial with Maria um, Abramovich on Easter Sunday on YouTube, and they had to take it down within 12 hours. And it was 
it was Maria Abramovich, who's a witch for these elite. Uh, she was part of this, they were put on VR glasses and they were like summoning people through the VR. It was like a ritual shown in a commercial mm -hmm. and the fact they put it on an Easter Sunday and that it took it down and nobody even like it just, it was really obvious if you can find that footage, what they're showing you that this stuff is about. It's, it's about summoning deities. It's about possessing people. It's about entrapment. Um, it ensnares energies like, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting to observe this commercial. Um, it's kind of disturbing actually, but um, anyways, it would it would make sense that they would tell you what they're doing with this technology through rituals like that. Like, um, you know, it, it's it's very much the way that they do things. Like to me, 9-11 was a ritual murder. They planned it for years and years and years. They showed it in all of their uh, commercials and the Simpsons and the dollar bill and all the ways in which they unveil what they're going to do. They harvest energy this way. They harvest energy through different means um, that they consider to be, you know, necessary in order to sort of run this world is to keep us all traumatized. And uh, yeah, so I'm glad you told me about this. I'm going to look into it. That's insane. Insane. If you don't find it, just send me an email and I'll connect you to the guy that sent it to me. I didn't, I did not want to keep that video. I did not like that video, but yeah. I'll, I, I can make sure he sends you the link. Wow, man. Yeah, I mean, um, I was going to ask you too about isolation. I think sham shamans prepare themselves for to be alone for long periods of time in order to get to know themselves, in order for all their undealt with emotions to surface, I guess. You know, vision quests, spending time by yourself. Um, I also can, you know, I think hermits, a lot, there's a lot of people that try to hermitize and it's can be really uh people can get really lost if they don't have other people to bounce ideas off or they don't have like we're social creatures and some people would say a lone wolf is a dead wolf and um i just wanted to hear your thoughts on what isolation can do to you both ben whether it's beneficial or like if you have if, if it's a gray area for you or what your thoughts are Oh, uh, it, it is entirely dependent 100% on what you're doing with your isolation. Isolation as a phenomenon unto itself is, is basically neutral. It has everything to do with what the personality engages in, in that isolation. So it can be very, very rewarding from a monk or a shaman's perspective, or even for a scribe or, or a researcher such as myself locked in maximum security, uh, ad sig dungeon cell, but I'm surrounded by literature and books that people are donating to me and my family sending me and my publisher sending me and other prisoners are sliding books under the door. As long as I am absorbing information, isolation is fantastic. It is distraction free. I can absorb all this data like a sponge. I can think clearly. I can do it for long periods of time. I can pattern break by doing push-ups and exercises, sit-ups, doing doing donkey kicks and squats. And I can I I used to exercise I used to be an exercise fanatic. So I can get all these things done, get my heart pumping again, take me a little 30 hour 30 minute uh power nap, wash off, get up and do it all over again for another eight, nine hours reading, writing, researching. This is what I did. I did it in isolation and I loved it. In that scenario, it's beneficial. Now, isolation for like uh, sometimes they'll throw you in the dungeon and you don't have anything to read, no, no, no human contact with anybody. That is when you're going to slip into psychoses. This is when, when, when you start experiencing the base negative. Sensory deprivation is never good. So uh, sensory, de sensory depri deprivation for long periods of time, especially when it's coupled with anxiety or, or base, base emotions, such as injustice, such as, you know, I don't deserve this. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be debilitating. It's going to be terrible, but isolation, isolation and sensory deprivation for short periods of time for like shamans and monks and all that, because they're, they're not really not doing something. They're only oh. using a different faculty. They're using yeah. their mind. They're using their spirit. It's different. So it always depends on what you do with the isolation. It doesn't, it doesn't isolation itself can, it's just like, I mean, it's just like a gun, a gun. I mean, if you're a pioneer in the old West, 
and and you're surrounded by enemies uh, uh, and you're surrounded by people who will take your stuff and animals that will kill you and you need to eat that rifle is going to be a friend to you but it kills things just like just like the liberal mindset today they try to paint guns as evil there's nothing inherently evil about a gun mm -hmm. you understand so uh, right. the, the gun itself isn't good or evil it's what you do with it yeah since you brought up the wild west you know i'm having a hard time putting together and i haven't watched everything of yours but the wild west stories of the oregon trail and all of this like hardship and yet obviously there was technology building really complicated buildings or was the wild west a period of time that actually happened that was a reset period you know where things the technology was stripped from people for a period of time or like i i would love to hear how those these two worlds meet or or if you think these buildings that were built are just so much older than we're told that it was built during a time when technology was accessible and then it was horse and buggy for real for a period of time if you could explain that at all i'm 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 still having i'm still going through the data yeah i just it's really hard to it's getting increasingly hard to ignore how important 1902 was it's getting increasingly hard to to ignore that whole 12 year period between 1890 and 1902 because it seems like the world that we're living in now was built during that 12 year period and wow. uh it seems like everything before that is highly suspect all these all these stories and these, these things i mean you've seen my videos i've gone through the through, through the civil war narrative i've had a lot of people pissed off at me about my civil war video but i never said the civil war didn't happen it's just that all the evidence shows that it was it was truly what it was originally called the war of northern aggression and it was only called a war in retrospect because while it was happening it was really a genocide so uh, the South was absolutely ill-prepared for all the invasions of, of, of Union and European forces that just flooded the South and just started killing man, woman, and child. So, you know, 10, 20 years later, they've rewritten it as a civil war and, and created this scenario of all these epic battles, but they weren't. They were slaughters. Mm. It's, a, it's a huge difference. So, yeah, I'm, uh, and the more and more I look into this, it's just all this history just seems to be it's a, a lot of it's been rewritten. It's it's still it still baffles my mind that I have a library of of I have a lot I have a personal library of photos from the 1840s, 50s, and 60s of horse races, of chariots, I mean of of, of, of wagons moving fast, of running water, of trees blowing in the wind, of people moving on horseback. I have all these in black and white. And yet I'm told by authorities that the reason we don't have any footage, we don't have a single photograph of a single civil war battle or battlefield after it's over is because well back then setting up the camera uh, they wouldn't <laughs> want to take pictures because uh the camera the the it would always be blurry if objects were moving <laughs> that doesn't even make sense i've got older photography way before the civil war where objects were moving and they came and the picture came out just fine yeah yeah it's a uh, it's all BS. It's all BS. They're only the only Civil War picture that they ever show of a battlefield shows three or four bodies. The fourth, and those people could be alive, and they're not in they're not in battle uniforms. It looks like it just it looks like civilians were just gunned down. Sure. And it shows it shows four. It's only one picture, and it shows four bodies, and uh, they're spread across a little tract of land, but the rest of the land looks okay. Listen, it's not, that's not how civil, uh, the civil mm -hmm. war battles that are painted to us were with cannons and were with guns. And let me tell you something, when you got thousands of men shooting guns all in one direction, it takes the forest out. It takes all the branches out, all the twigs, all the leaves, all that. It takes all that out when they're shooting at each other. It, it, yeah, it's, it's total warfare. Cannons blowing craters in the ground, body parts everywhere. You don't think a photographer 
a photographer would have made a career. He would have made a living just taking pictures of a battlefield eight hours after the battle. There are still men moaning in agony. There are still bodies spread out everywhere. It takes over a week to clean the battlefield up and bury everybody, tag them, identify who's who. And, and while that's going on, other, other soldiers are in there retrieving bayonets, retrieving daggers, retrieving sabers, retrieving utility belts. Even, even the boots and hats are all taken off the battlefield. No pictures of any of this activity. No pictures of whole battlefields full of dead, dead and wounded. None of this. And that right there is a red flag for me, a big red flag that this entire, entire episode is uh, covering up something else. Mm. Yeah, man, that's... It's, I appreciate the common sense, you know, I can't believe for how long people just thought that, you know, and me included that I grew up thinking that all of these things just were at their face value. And the more you look at everything that's put in our face, it all appears to be psyoped. Uh, it's hard to even wrap our head around how thorough that is. Um, so yeah, I'm starting to question Native American stories, old, you know, old, because, because they, the the fact that we have access to these really powerful testaments and stuff and these powerful characters and they're they sort of back up storylines that would fit with the common narrative and so it would all have to be part of a psyop if if and um but you know i appreciate in the castaneda books one of the things don juan told carlos is that you've been lied to about your history everything you think you know about this world is not it's not what what our oral tradition tells us and he talked about a time when there were giants. He talked about a time when really powerful beings did very powerful things in this realm and that we've been reduced to nothing compared to how powerful we actually are and that we used to have full access to all of our, you know, uh, our capacity to, to, to think clearly, to, to use dreaming and imagination and telepathy and, and all these other things used to be very accessible. And, and I think today there are some powerful psychics and there's psychic, you know, warfare or psychic attacks and telepathy is still on some level accessible. Like we, we tend to know each other's thoughts and feelings when we don't, we don't know how to explain that. But often, uh, I think, you know, told shamans have a good understanding of why that used to be accessible and why it isn't. And, and they refer to it as similar to something like AIX, where there's like an interference being run on, on our resources, we used to be more resourceful, and we, we, we intuited things on a much more powerful level. And um, so it, have you experienced any or do you read about psychics attacks or te telepathy or things from from the books that you've read around uh, how you know some some people have these unique gifts? Oh, I, I'm I'm not a doubter. I I don't doubt it. I, I am I am perfectly capable of imagining that some people have these abilities and gifts. It is not something I share. Yeah. The, the the only thing abnormal that I think that I've experienced is that I believe that my intuitive capacity is much higher than most of the people that, that I know that are around me. It's not, it, I don't have any superpowers. I'm not to let, I've never claimed telepathy. I've never claimed prescience. I've never claimed anything. I'm very logical in, in yeah. most of my analysis, but when it comes to reading somebody to mm. see if they have some negative intention toward me to, I mean, listen, this may have been just by virtue of 26 years and 42 days in prison, yeah. being being surrounded by men and able to read them uh, personalities quick. Maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But I am very intuitive. And, and uh, friends and family often remark that, hey, man, Ash, you're at, you're dead right about that. And it would, it would have been some comment that I made in passing about someone. It's just it's uh, I just believe that my that my intuition Anytime it flares up within me, there's a reason why. I do not, I, I believe that the human spirit can detect things in other people's spirit and that we just can't question it. We just have to understand, okay, well, look, if I'm really feeling nervous about this individual and I have, I don't have any tangible, logical reason to do so, I need to pay attention to that. I need to watch this individual a little bit more closely around me because there's a reason why that's flaring up inside of me. So, so I listen to it, but here's something pretty interesting. 
answering to your question. I was going through some old books with Big John just earlier today, and we were cataloging uh, books for the Archaics Library. This this fell out of, fell out of a book from a Rosicrucian library. I'm gonna see if I can't I, I can't get this close enough for you to see this. Oh yeah, Albert W. Heffron, Ph.D., Parapsychology, Ghost Hunter, Hypnosis, Psychic Consultation, Seances by Appointment, Sacramento, California. <laughs> Hell yeah. Everything in this book was from 1978, 79, and 1980. So this is a pretty old card. Yeah. Lecturer uh, and author, ghost hunter, parapsychology, psychic consultations, hypnosis, seances by appointment. I wonder if business was good in San Francisco back then. But, uh, yeah, I wonder if business was all oh, uh, Sacramento, California. All right. That's a pretty interesting card right there, isn't it? I, yeah, I wonder how busy he, he got. That's uh. Oh. I wonder if he's still alive. Yeah, right. I just I just gave him a shout out. Totally. <laughs> no, there's a lot of lot of money to be mean be made by people. You know, if you're if they're unaware, um, you could you could pull pull the pull the carpet out from under people and make them believe anything. But that stuff in in my world is real. I've experienced haunted homes and uh, presences that are very intense and that make the hairs on your neck stand up and. I don't, I don't fall into fear. I just notice, and that's what shamans say is there's these entities of the night that exist in the wilderness. If you open yourself up enough, you'll experience them. They can't hurt you directly, but they could make you, they could scare you enough that you might hurt yourself or they might put you in a situation where you panic and overreact to the presence of this intensity. Um, so I think there was a time when people were more aware of the the multidimensional aspects of our being and that we interacted with spirits and whether it's, you know, fairies and, and, or like trees, I believe are conscious and create projections that they can send out into the wilderness to sort of protect themselves. And that there's more magic to this realm than we've sort of accepted and I, I think we're moving into a time where maybe more and more people will start to tap into that kind of support and the the, the mystery I, I like your shirt but the mystery of the world is I think you know going to continue to reveal that there's more more to this realm than we realized you already know man this is this scooby-doo <laughs> yeah it's so cool that's a mystery machine that's good right? man. yep we got to remove their masks. They always find the the guys and remove their masks, like the Joe Bidens of the world. If we could just yep. get some pull some masks off these people, yeah, man, I, I I believe that. It does seem like things are getting pretty intense in that in the political world where we're we're looking at a a lot of exposure, and um, it, it, it sometimes I get a little hopeful that we're we're going to start to see some uh, some some heads roll. But uh, are you feeling any? any intensity on that front i think i think this whole narrative of exposing all this criminal activity in the white house biden the biden's home biden biden's uh storage facility all all these they, they have documented all these felonies now no but nothing's ever happened i believe it's all specifically designed to get you to totally 100 percent lose hope in the entire political arena yeah. it's it, this is this this is this is a coordinated attack uh against the population uh it's psychological this is psychological warfare and i think they want to move us in a certain direction and in order to get everybody on board to agreeing with that certain direction they have to show the people that every government in the world is full of buffoons who cannot be trusted and they're all criminals and i think they have a solution on the horizon and i think it's something they're going to present to people and by the time they present this to people people are all going to be on board and say hell yeah this is what we need to do because all this stuff's a joke Right. Yep. No, well said, man. I'm glad you you you're clear. I, I agree. It's all theater. Shamans would say it's all a distraction that it keeps you from discovering your inner resources by staying constantly tapped into the 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 theater that you'll never you know get to know yourself and therefore be able to forge your own reality tunnel essentially because you you're caught in it becomes part of your filter. You're constantly worried about what's going to happen on the political stage because you think it's going to have a direct effect on you. And because you believe that, therefore it does, 
but you know i know russian dreamers who haven't watched the news in 30 years they don't even know what's they, they the, the only way they find out about things is is the neighbors come and tell them did you know we're at war and they're like what are you talking about i didn't know that like so you know it's good to free yourself from these storylines in any way possible because there's so much more to 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 our lives than tracking this this distraction essentially yeah. I agree. And I also believe that it's more sophisticated than people believe the because these narratives, especially about Biden, Biden administration and all these narratives, listen, they're constructed so cleverly that the 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 intelligent individual will observe all this and actually laugh and be comical. Like, oh, my God, none of this is real. This is so stupid. It is so retarded. And and you understand that this is all the world's a stage and, and we'll find humor in how ridiculous all this is. However, those who aren't critically thinking, those who aren't doing deductive reasoning, those who are just part of the collective and they believe almost everything that they hear anyway, those who don't do any investigation whatsoever, those are the ones that actually begin to vibrate in a more base phenomena. They actually fall victim to the dungeon programming. To them, they get despaired. It's a hopelessness sets in. And uh, yeah, it's like, like I said, this is like a contract-based reality. And multiple ways of viewing the same phenomena are always available. So I just mm -hmm. don't feel that I don't I, I don't feel that this is all as bad as people think. I believe that they're separating the wheat from the chaff. This is this is a this is a, a very unique situation we find ourselves in since 2020. Prior to 2020, we knew the direction of events. We could follow event trajectories and basically ascertain where things were going in their narratives. Since 2020, there has been a massive worldwide pattern break. And now nothing makes sense. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I like that. It it seems like it gives us a much of an opportunity to erase our history. In a, in a healthy way. That's what shamans call it, erasing personal history so that your blueprint is no longer based on, on some old fear-based concept. So the chaos of it all is, is, is I think, promising because forces rise to meet each other. So with everything that they use to attack or control, there's a way in which we can benefit from that. So the contraction creates expansion and in a way, we're just being shown a way back to our uh, to to getting to know what we're capable of through this very intelligent design. And, and in a sense, that's where you, I believe, in a creator force is is allowing this is actually like almost like we're inside Gaia's dream that this is this is a a a, a, a collective experience that is necessary, right? not something to be at odds with. Oh, I'm agree. I, I'm in agreement. It's a, you choose what you participate in by how you react to external phen uh, phenomena. Yeah, it's you choose. You're choosing your reality every single day. It's you choose. You choose to be fearful and get angry all the time. You hear about this po politics and you're fearful about the future and all that. Then any anything you fear, you buy into. Anything you buy into, you become a participant in. Yeah, I, I heard you recently talk about Tolkien and uh, and the Narnia C.S. Lewis and stuff and how that impacted you. And I really appreciate hearing that because I, too, believe fiction is on, a, on sometimes fiction is like it's revealing the real true nature of what we're capable of. And it's it's very people like Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were really masterful at you know telling us something very important about ourselves. And um, I inspire to just be able to do something similar someday to be able to tap in like you have writing fiction that is you know productive that is evolutionary that is revealing the magical nature of of our beings as far as like you know it just brings a lot of uh clarity and hope and it helps people to um you know tap in not only that not only feel connected to that guidance system but to access their own imagination because it's when it's when we stop imagining when from zero to three we were imagination junkies we were tripping out at a young age we were seeing really cool like all these feelings were running through us there was a lot of affection it was really pure and it's really beautiful to observe little kids when they're just in total you know experience of that nature and 
shamans strive to do this. They try to re regather that youthful uh, creativity and imagination and they apply it towards, uh, you know, dreaming tasks. But they also, in order to do that, they create a foundation by dreaming forward the life that they want to live so that they're stable. They have a good career. They have the ability to then operate from a base foundation because a, a lot you'll see a lot of people get into psychedelics and they become very ungrounded and they they don't have structure they don't have a foundation to rely on and and so that's what the new age movement and like the grateful dead scene and all the cia stuff was about was to take a lot of people that had open hearts and were interested in in you know the mystery of things and kind of usher them into a world that would keep them drug induced and unstable and traveling around the nation rather than creating healthy families, you know, and, and building up the strength of this country. So I, I hope we can reclaim our imagination, you know, um, is, you know, because right now people are, they just keep finding new ways to harvest people's focus and attention. And a lot of it's the truther movement. Now, a lot of truthers are, I don't know if it's my signal or yours, but the last thing I heard was a lot of truthers are, and I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of truthers are the new Hollywood. They're like deceivers. They're, they're, they're keeping people in fear and hope that is uns that's just very dysfunctional, you know, yeah. and it's, uh, it's really sad to see, but they're very good at it, whether they know it or not. I think a lot of people are controlled opposition, and they don't even know it like they're being manipulated in by their ego in order to do things that are completely you know not a path of heart but is just very misleading right i agree i do agree i do so agree it's it's, a, it's important for people to you know and and we all go through stages you know i was watching some people that turned out to be really self righteous and um and you know, their ego got exposed. They, they, the, the true nature sometimes comes out when people are put to, you know, like challenged. And then they, 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 they expose how um, uncomfortable they are with their own truths. They, it's very threatening to them that you would, you know, have a different point of view or ask them to expand upon their thinking. They, they, they end up being, and it's, it's all over like Twitter and social media, just all these, guys saying i'm more of an alpha male than you are and you're you know you're weak you don't have all enough women and it, it, this it's the numerology astrology truther thing and everybody's like just trying to be the top dog and it's all the andrew tate's sort of it's yeah. almost like the andrew tate program entered into all these men and they're all following that system which is very much like male dominant you know, you, you don't let a woman into your heart, you know, you're always, you know, in charge of your emotions, you don't release emotion in front of your woman and all these like sort of unsustainable ways of it, which we're supposed to be. And, and, and these little, like even my son, like people are, it's, it's hard not to get caught in these ways of looking at things. Yeah. I've never followed Andrew, Andrew Tate. I don't really don't know anything about him. It's a, uh... It's just I, I've never even been on Twitter. I've never even seen a tweet. A tweet. So I, yeah. I'm, I just don't. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty isolated in my in in what I do. I just stick with YouTube, that's and awesome. other people promote my my archaics groups. But that's about it. Yeah. There's a lot. On, there's a lot more people on Twitter talking about your information now. We go into these called Twitter Spaces where you can talk to anybody as many people as, as join the room and everybody can raise their hand and um, some really solid people are, rep, are uh, you know, it, doing their best to explain your research to people and, and uh, recommending your channel. And it's, it's creating some really cool discussions and I'm meeting more and more archaics uh, people and it's, it's really cool. So if in the future you ever wanted to, to set up a space you know, where you could spend a couple hours taking questions, it would really blow people's minds. And I'd love to facilitate that. We could even do it just through my uh, Twitter page where you would be on the end of a Zoom call. And then 
everyone could hear you talk through my phone once we plugged it in if you were ever open to it it would be yeah, uh, that's, uh, listen i'm I'm open to anything i'm cool with that as long as you have taken care of all the complexity and all i have to do is turn on my computer and talk i'm good i'm good that's, that's what we'll do then i look forward to making that happen because there's a really really positive group of people in these communities and um there's just a lot happening when you get a lot of people talking to each other and it's uh, it's an opportunity to really build we call it building we build on each other we one person talks and shares something someone else builds on that and then you you know and it creates uh it creates a bond it's it's positive and you you feel the effects especially when because you can feel it when when it's interactive like that and there's like hundreds of people all listening and they're like responding with emojis you know, it's similar to your YouTube stuff, but it's it has a little bit more intensity because anyone can talk. Um, it just creates a, a, a very unique dynamic. I think you'd I think you'd have fun with it for a couple hours. Yeah, well, let's set that up sometime. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Jason. I yeah, I think we'll 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 conclude here and uh, and I'll invite you to that. And still trying to work out logistics to get you and Shiva and Saul and me all talking. I I need to get back in touch with Shiva on that and try to get you guys uh, all on the same date sometime. I think that'd be a good round table as well. I have a, I have an interview with uh Shiva like oh, cool. next week in the next week or so. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah we're we're going to be him. talking, we're going to be going deep on Mandela effect. Nice. Yeah. I'm trying to interview him before I do a round table with the four of us. So um, I'm going to reach out to him again and look forward to hearing you guys talk as well. And, Always a pleasure, brother. Thank you so much for taking the time. And um, I'll uh, send you the link to this video once I clean it up. Cool. Cool. It's uh, You're going to put this on your channel? Yeah. And then I'll, uh, if you could put it on your, if you could post the link in your world, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as, I, as, soon as it's on your channel, I will send all my traffic your way. Uh, I appreciate it, man. So good. It's uh, been, my daughter listens to you and has had really huge breakthroughs. Uh, she awesome. listens to you at work and she's like 21 years old and just soaking it all up. And um, really, so I, my heartfelt thank you to, you know, helping her with uh, your concepts. It's, it's really empowering for people to hear you break things down in the way that you do, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh yeah. All right. Awesome. All right look forward to next time, brother. All right. Yeah. See you soon. Later. Later.